in life, we take many paths in order to progress further. The old saying goes, when one door closes, another one opens. But sometimes in life, out of nowhere, your path comes across something or someone that could quite literally shape the rest of your future, for better or for worse. And on one reasonably hot day in May of 2020, James Stocko and Alexander Layton's paths were about to cross for the very first and very last time, which would change their lives forever. Thornaby, just outside of Middlesbrough, and on May 15th, 2020, 34-year-old Alexander Layton had been up for the night, stressed about a man by the name of Liam Frost owing him money. You see, he accused Liam, his friend, of stealing items from his flat, items that he was intending to sell on eBay. But Alexander was unemployed and says that he was in £6,000 worth of debt. But we don't know what for, reports don't make it clear. Alex said any money that he had coming in was used on debt repayments. But it wasn't just alleged stolen items that Alex was angry with Liam about. He also stated that Liam turned up at pretty much any time for free food and cannabis. By May 15th, 2020, with items now missing, Alex sent a bunch of threatening messages over to Liam. Watch me smash your face today then I'll stab you, leaving you unable to walk. You think I'm kidding? Let's fucking see. See what you do when you get me wound up like this. I'm coming for you, boy. After a brief exchange between the pair, the conversation ended with Alex telling Liam he was willing to do jail time over what he intended to do to his once friend. Throughout the early hours of the morning on that same spring day, Alex stayed up contacting Stockton Council, telling them of his financial difficulties and feeling suicidal. The suicide also stemming from money issues. He told them he only had £300 a month to live off and concerned officials sent him vouchers for a food bank and for gas, giving him some relief. As the day grew, Alex went about his business, preparing for a camping trip to some woodland in Great Ayton, roughly 15 miles away from his home. First, though, he had to go to Halfords in Stockton to get his bike repaired before making his way to the food bank to collect his food. But Alex was armed. In his bag, he was carrying a 12-inch kitchen knife that he says was simply a part of his gear. He intended to cut wood from trees for his campfire and needed a knife to cut some salmon he had bought to take with him on his trip. Alex was a ticking time bomb though. He was in debt, he was angry and he was ready to strike out at anyone who would wrong him. While Alexander was going about his day, father of one, James Stocko, a popular workshop controller, was out with his four-year-old son Harry for the day. They had decided to go visit the grandparents and were making their way back home. Alex, James's wife, was waiting for their return, but sadly only one of them would return on that fateful day. I shoved my head out of the window. I thought there was going to be a fight. I got off my chair to see what was happening. It was like raised voices. The driver was annoyed and shouting, but the pedestrian shouted, Come on over, I'm here. The driver said, OK, I'm coming. Is a testimony from witnesses on Trenchard Avenue in Thornaby just after 2pm on the 15th of May 2020. The driver, James Stocko, the pedestrian, Alexander Layton. Alexander had been making his way home. He got off the bus, walked out into the middle of a dual carriageway, and James, with four-year-old Harry in the car, had to break hard to avoid crashing into him. But although witnesses from properties had claimed that James said he was coming, that isn't exactly what happened. According to various drivers who saw what went down, they said in a nutshell, the two had a heated exchange, 
and within seconds, Alex dropped his bag, drew for that 12-inch kitchen knife that was in his backpack, ran up to James's car and stabbed him six times in the leg in front of his four-year-old son. Unfortunately, it was only a matter of time before James would sadly be pronounced dead after he was stabbed in a major artery. And 20 minutes after the initial attack took place, he was pronounced dead in the back of an ambulance. Four-year-old Harry was scooped up by a witness. She stayed with him until emergency services arrived. But bizarrely, Alex didn't make a run for it. In fact, he was described as leaving the scene as if nothing happened. When he finally arrived home after leaving James for dead, he texted a friend saying, hey babes, I'm home now. Do you like the photos? His demeanour stayed calm before he made his way to Great Ayton for his solo camping trip. In the midst of this though, a murder investigation had been opened and CCTV collected by detectives within the day depicted the whole incident go down. Alex was identified as the knife man and so the hunt was on. On the evening of the 16th of May 2020, officers surrounded a La Bella Pizzeria in Great Ayton, having received a tip-off that Alex was in the area. When he was arrested by police, he was quoted as saying, It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. It only went in his leg. Either way, he was subsequently charged in relation to the murder investigation and ultimately admitted to killing James, but it was in self-defense as he said that James had been pulling for a weapon. The prosecution didn't accept this though and so a murder trial went ahead. In court, his police statement was read out explaining his version of events. He said, As I crossed the road, the driver of a BMW beeped and started shouting and screaming at me. He drove across the road, opened the door and started swearing at me. I believed he was reaching for a weapon. He was trying to get out of the car. His leg was out of the car. I had a knife in my rucksack that I was going to take camping. I panicked. I got the knife out and stabbed him once, maybe twice, in his right leg. I was scared and frightened of this person. I believe what I did was to protect myself. But when detectives had asked him why he took the knife with him to Halfords and then to the food bank, he replied no comment. Quite interesting given the fact that he wasn't to use the knife until later that evening when he needed it for camping. Of course, he went back home after the incident had went down. After a trial at Teesside Crown Court, however, he was unanimously found guilty on the charges brought against him after it took the jury just two hours to deliver the verdict. That's how much they seen through his web of lies. He was then handed a life sentence with the minimum term of 23 years. Overall, this case saddens me. A man and his son simply going out for the day when all of a sudden a random man nearly forces them to crash and in the space of a couple of minutes, the driver of the car, a dad, would go on to lose his life. His son loses a dad forever. We also have to remember that in this case as well, a young child was there. He witnessed this go down. This will literally stay with him for the rest of his life. We can only hope he gets the support that he needs. But if this wasn't heartbreaking enough, James's wife had received an alert from the local news telling her that a major incident had gone down on Trenchard Avenue where the stabbing took place. She would go on to message her husband to tell him to take a different route home. Sadly though, he would never make it. But it seems to me as if Alex had it out for anyone that day. If we remember earlier on on the 15th before the incident went down with James, he was saying that he was going to stab Liam, the person who he accused of stealing stuff from his home. So I believe if it wasn't James and somebody else had got in his way, he would have definitely took it out on that person because of what happened with Liam. 